that yesterday, uh, Joy, and still nothing from the lieutenant governor, no response whatsoever. Uh, it's just to win wars, not to be woke. It is. Firing top officers is one of many ways Project 2025 is a roadmap to rebuilding a military it refers to as What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope you guys saw the clip there. You saw the clips of CD going back to practice. You know what's kind of funny? You know what's kind of funny here is how, how it is that we got this deal done just in time for the Cowboys to return back to the star and the fans to be there. You, you know you know how that worked out. You, you, you realize that, right? And it seems like everybody is elated about CD being back. And it seems like in the grand scheme of things that everybody is happy about CD and everything else. doesn't seem like with CD Lamb signing the second highest non-quarterback contract in the history of the NFL that nobody seems to be thinking that it's bad. The interesting thing to me is how the Cowboys structured it. And this also makes me wonder about Dak Prescott's contract. Okay, Here's the thing that's going to be um, interesting in my mind. Okay, Because, see, here's the thing. Currently, somebody said this Oh, I tell you what it was. Okay, Law Nation had uh, put an Instagram post on of somebody who had said that the Cowboys had forty million dollars worth of cap space um, with CD Lamb being signed, and I was kind of like, I don't know where you saw that because the Cowboys had twenty-eight point like eight million. I've been watching the cap a lot. Twenty-eight point eight million dollars is what they had. Um, cap wise without CD Lamb being on there because CD Lamb technically you, you hear all the cicadas right yeah you hear um, because CD Lamb was considered suspended so his numbers weren't part of the 28 his number that now is uh, 8 point something this year so that drops the Cowboys down to 20 and I think the maximum that you can roll over is about 20 million dollars so, oh, forgive me. Forgive me on that one. It is about twenty million dollars. So, the Cowboys will make some signings, but you have to understand most of these signings that the Cowboys are making, because they're basically vested veterans. It there's a way that you basically they get paid more money, but it's not actually showing up on the cap. So the cap number might be a million dollars. They're actually getting closer to two and so forth. Um, you know, these are the games that the Cowboys play, and this is why they like to sign a lot of veterans because they're not committed long term. If they work out, okay, we'll get them a deal. But basically, you're renting these guys, and this is where Walker Wade is always like, "Oh, they're gonna blow it up. They got 30 free agents and this, that, and the other." It's like, yeah, they look at those guys as plug and play. So now, the way the Cowboys structured. C.D. Lamb's contract is very, very interesting because what they've done is, yeah, they got cap relief this year. They'll probably roll most of that money over next year, which will give them more cap space. So at the moment, they've got about $35 million in cap space for next year, which doesn't sound like a lot. If they're able to roll over, let's say, 15, that gives them like $50 million. That sounds a little bit better. But knowing you got to sign DAC and that you have to sign C.D., here's the thing. Right now, $55 million of this year's cap is Dak Prescott and $40 million is next year. What they did do, quietly, was they added two more voidable years to Dak Prescott's contract. So, C.D. Lamb is getting basically all his guaranteed money the first two years of the deal. And that's when his contract becomes more affordable. It actually will jump up quite high next year to like 35 million because they're looking at this and saying okay let's get him out the way early if it ends up being that this is a Des Bryant situation we won't have a lot of dead money after two years if we decide to move on but then maybe what you do is 
you look at Dak Prescott's number, and you might eat that number this year, that 55. Just leave that right there where it is um, because you don't want to go ahead and spread that out there. you already got the team that you want. There's no reason to do anything with that. You're better off biting the bullet on this now. But the 40 million, you could end up looking, that voidable money, you could look at that as part of like guaranteed money, so to speak, and say it's gonna be prorated over the life of the next contract. So hypothetically, if it's a four year deal, what you'll do is you'll say $10 million of that money is part of the cost of doing the contract. And that could help you to get yourself a little more capital relief because here's the thing, and here's why this works. If you do that with the 40 million, if you take the $55 million hit this year, I'm saying hypotheticals because I don't know exactly 100% how all the things work. But in my mind, okay, you get rid of the 55 this year. You just bite the bullet on that and you're just done. When you do the new contract, you basically take the 40 million and you say that that's gonna be spread out over the four years of the voidable years of the contract or the new contract, so to speak. Okay, you got me right there? So that's 10 million that you're gonna take each of the years. Now, at the moment, that 40 million is baked into the count of next year's salary. So, you roll over 15 million, you got 50 right now on the cap before you do DAC and before you do CD. If you end up gaining 30 million of the money that Dak Prescott is due, you follow me? You owe him 40 million in dead money. You prorate that over the life of the contract. You're creating 30 million dollars of cap space for next year on top of the 50 you have. So now you get Dak Prescott's deal done. You got 80 million to work with. That's how you get Dak Prescott there. And maybe what you do since you're take, biting the bullet with C.D. Lamb the next two years is you kick Dax down the road so that way the third year of C.D. Lamb is when you take the bigger hits because you'll got his out of the way. And what we've heard is that the talks are progressing. So we don't know if there's actually negotiations or we're just having conversations back and forth to start getting the framework together. Um, and we'll see if this actually gets done before um, before the first game. And it's already Taco Tuesday, so there's not much time left to get this thing done. But here's the reality for those out there that are saying, yeah, they're going to sign CD and they're going to sign um, Micah Parsons and let Wack Dak go. Well, here's the thing. You don't bring in CD Lamb and have no succession plan for a quarterback, Okay. You know, we, we've seen great quarterbacks go other places, but it's generally thought that the teams had a plan. When they ended up letting Tom Brady go, you know, they had the draft picks and everything else that they could go ahead and do something and try and bring in somebody else. Didn't work out very good. When Indianapolis decided to move on from Peyton Manning, they ended up having, of course, Andrew Luck that they drafted. Didn't quite work out. Seattle, I think, was just ready for... Uh, Russell Wilson to just get out of there that they were ready to say we're, we're starting over from the Super Bowl years and we're going to use Russell Wilson as the piece that's going to help us to restart and that's why they made that trade but you have seen quarterbacks go but the team always has at least somebody else under contract Cowboys at the moment don't have a quarterback under contract for next year nobody and that's kind of funny when you think that the Cleveland Browns, this is this is crazy. Um, the Cleveland Browns, wow, that's kind of weird. It's nighttime, or it's getting to be nighttime. I got closer and it got brighter. I, I guess it's this adaptive camera and stuff. The Cleveland Browns kept four quarterbacks on their roster. You got Deshaun Watson, who's costing you $63 million. How are you going to keep three more quarterbacks? I can't figure it out, but hey, I'm just glad C.D. Lamb is back. All right, good people. Peace out.